Want a simple way to enhance how well your thyroid is working? Today I'm talking about a simple set of vitamins, three actually, that can be combined to enhance your thyroid at multiple levels. What makes this triple combination even more attractive is that the majority of you listening to this right now aren't getting enough of these vitamins. And even better is the fact that they provide benefits to your entire body, not just your thyroid. What combination am I talking about? Vitamins A, D, and K2. Let's talk about how they work, why you should take them, and how to take them correctly starting right now. Number one, the pro-thyroid benefits of vitamin A. Vitamin A, what is it? The term vitamin A is used to describe a compounds of vitamin that are essential for human health. As it relates to your thyroid, we know that your thyroid and vitamin A work together to modify the expression of genes. If vitamin A is not present in sufficient amounts, then your thyroid function will suffer in more ways than one. And the first is through changes to the shape and function of the thyroid gland. Yes, you heard me, not getting enough vitamin A can actually change the shape of your thyroid gland and may increase your risk of developing structural changes like goiter or thyroid gland enlargement. Second, you need vitamin A for the function and differentiation of certain immune cells called T regulatory cells. These are the same cells, by the way, that go haywire if you have Hashimoto's thyroiditis. And third, vitamin A is needed by your thyroid to create and convert thyroid hormones. To simplify, if you don't have enough vitamin A, then you're putting your thyroid in a situation where it can't produce the thyroid hormones that it needs, including T3, which puts you at risk for developing hypothyroidism. It can't protect your thyroid gland from autoimmune attack, which means it puts you at increased risk for Hashimoto's. It can't express the genes that your thyroid needs in order to operate, putting you at increased risk for iodine deficiency and thyroid gland enlargement. And it's not as responsive at the cellular level to thyroid hormones, putting you at increased risk for developing thyroid resistance. When you hear all these things, it's pretty clear that your thyroid has a need for vitamin A. The question is not whether or not vitamin A is helpful or needed by your thyroid, but whether or not you should be taking more vitamin A in supplement form. And the answer to that question is easy. Yes, you probably should. Data from NHANES has shown that about 45% of the population of the United States does not meet their daily vitamin A recommended intake. And this data, by the way, was collected between 2005 and 2016, so it is pretty recent. That's roughly one out of two people listening to this right now who aren't getting enough vitamin A through their diet. This is just from the United States, by the way, because in other developed countries, the rate of vitamin A deficiency is much higher. So not only is it clear that your thyroid needs vitamin A to operate, but it's also clear that many thyroid patients probably don't get enough of it, which means they would benefit from additional supplements. There are many different types of vitamin A that you can take in supplement form, but they all aren't created equal. Some of these forms already come activated, which means that your body can use them right away, and others require additional steps before they can be used. For thyroid patients, the more active forms are preferred because the activation of vitamin A occurs in the liver and the thyroid may negatively impact liver function in thyroid patients. For this reason, many thyroid patients benefit from taking vitamin A in the retinyl palmitate form at around 2,000 micrograms RAE, which is the equivalent to about 6,666 IUs. The term RAE just stands for retinyl activity equivalence and is just another way to measure the dose of vitamin A. As long as your daily dose of vitamin A does not exceed 10,000 IUs per day, you are not at risk for developing vitamin A toxicity, especially if you combine your vitamin A with the vitamin that we're about to talk about next. Number two, the pro-thyroid benefits of vitamin D3. Many people know about vitamin D, but I honestly don't think they appreciate just how important it is. In fact, if we were to really get into the weeds, it would be more appropriate and more accurate to refer to vitamin D as a hormone as opposed to a vitamin. And that's because the majority of the cells in your body have a vitamin D receptor. If you think about it, vitamin D is more closely related to the action of something like thyroid hormone as opposed to the vitamin action of something like vitamin A. So what do we know about vitamin D and thyroid function. Let's take a look at a study published in 2018 called The Effects of Vitamin D Supplementation on Thyroid Function in Hypothyroid Patients, a Randomized Double-Blind Placebo-Controlled Trial to explain. This study looked at 200 hypothyroid patients, which means these patients already had a sluggish thyroid, and gave them 50,000 IUs of vitamin D or placebo for 12 weeks. At the end of the 12 weeks, the researchers found that the hypothyroid patients taking vitamin D experienced reduced TSH levels, which is a marker of thyroid hormone function and conversion, and improved calcium concentrations. 
But note that they didn't find any difference in T4 and T3 levels in those taking vitamin D. Right away, we see that there is obviously some connection between vitamin D and thyroid function based solely on the impact that vitamin D supplementation had on TSH levels. TSH, which stands for thyroid stimulating hormone, is the test that most doctors use to assess total thyroid function. No, it's not the most accurate way to assess thyroid function, but it does give you some valuable information. You might be tempted to think that the fact that the TSH was lowered is bad given that these hypothyroid patients already had a low thyroid function, but the opposite is true. A reduction in TSH indicates that these hypothyroid patients saw an increase in their thyroid function, not a decrease. This is likely for several reasons. The first is that vitamin D is necessary to regulate the immune system, and because autoimmune thyroid disease is the number one cause of hypothyroidism in the United States, it's very likely that these patients were treating their immune system without even realizing it. And the second is that vitamin D has an impact on TSH receptor binding, meaning that the TSH just works more effectively in the presence of enough vitamin D. Beyond this study, we also know that taking vitamin D protects against thyroid cancer, and it has therapeutic potential in the treatment of hyperthyroidism as well. So no matter what type of thyroid condition that you have, optimizing your vitamin D level is important and may benefit you. The next question is, do you actually need it? And when it comes to deficiency, it's estimated that approximately 42% of Americans aren't getting enough vitamin D each day, putting it right in line with about the same deficiency rate as vitamin A. In other words, there's about a four in 10 chance if you're listening to this right now that you do not have enough vitamin D in your body. The best form of vitamin D to take is vitamin D3 with a dose of around 2,000 to 5,000 IUs taken daily. Do note that this is really just the bare minimum because if you are overweight, you may need to take a much higher dose. And number three is the thyroid symptom related benefits of taking vitamin K2. This one may even be more important than vitamin A and vitamin D simply because most people aren't even aware of vitamin K2. Unlike vitamins A and D, vitamin K2 provides a slightly different benefit to thyroid patients by targeting the symptoms related to thyroid dysfunction. Here's what I mean. The research is very clear that hypothyroid patients experience higher rates of heart disease, including things like heart attacks, heart failure, arrhythmias, and so on, as well as osteoporosis, which is a form of bone loss, compared to the average population. And it just so happens that taking vitamin K2 may provide protective benefits against the progression of these two diseases, which is due in no large part to its impact on calcium regulation. Vitamin K2 and not vitamin K1 acts to shuttle calcium in your body to the places that you want it to be, like your bones, while taking it away from the places that you don't want it to be, like the walls of your arteries. The net effect of these two things is a reduction in arterial calcification and an increase in bone mineralization. Put simply, it makes your heart healthier and your bones stronger. And vitamin K2 happens to pair perfectly with vitamin D3, which acts to increase calcium levels. If you are going to take vitamin D3 as a thyroid patient, then it makes a whole lot of sense to combine that vitamin D3 with vitamin K2. There are two forms of vitamin K2 available known as MK7 and MK4, which each have slightly different benefits. So if you're going to take vitamin K2, it's best to use both forms. As you can see, these three vitamins work in perfect harmony with one another. Vitamin A acts to directly increase thyroid hormone production as well as thyroid hormone cellular sensitivity. Vitamin D helps to balance the immune system, thereby preventing autoimmune destruction of the thyroid gland itself, enhances the effectiveness of TSH, increases calcium levels, and prevents against vitamin A toxicity, while vitamin K2 helps to regulate the increase of calcium from vitamin D supplementation, while also reducing some of the more serious side effects of having a thyroid disease. You can get all of these vitamins in a vitamin ADK supplement. Just make sure that you're taking one that has the right forms and the right doses of each. While all of these vitamins are important for the function of your thyroid, there are plenty of others that thyroid patients are also deficient in. So if you love the idea of supporting your thyroid naturally, then you'll want to check out this video next.